Today we are going to examine the respiratory system of this patient. Respiratory system examination started with inspection. There are five points in inspection you should look for. The first is the shape of the chest. We have a lot of, any more than eight type, eight shape of the chest. The normal, the, the anterior posterior diameter, anterior posterior diameter is nearly 60% of transverse, okay? And the flat chest, the anterior posterior diameter is, is one fourth of the transverse, not more than 60, yeah? one fourth. And the barrel chest, when the intraposterior diameter equal to the transverse, this is a chronic obstructive airway disease. Yeah, there is a pigeon chest, a shaped pigeon chest, and a sternum projected anteriorly. Projected, the the pigeon chest is seen with with uh, rickets. Okay, where sometimes seen with asthma in in the age of two. You get a, a pigeon chest. Sadr al Hamam may There is a, a, a funnel chest. Lower end of the sternum, there is a, a, a funnel shape. We, we can put a, a 30 or 40 or 50 cc water in it. This is a called funnel chest. We have a transverse Harrison sulcus fissure. Yeah. Then we have the scoliosis in the back. We have the kyphosis in the back also, and we have the kyphoscoliosis. And the kyphoscoliosis, if being mixed together with the kyphosis, scoliosis with the kyphosis, the, the causes are nearly five. Okay? Idiopathic, polio, syringoma idea, then uh, Friedrich ataxia, all these causing typhoid scoliosis. This patient chest is nearly normal. This is an inspection, shape of the chest. Number two, an inspection of the chest is the respiration. This respiration, you look for it. Is it abdominal thoracic or thoracoabdominal? It is abdominal thoracic. When he is male, this is the normal. I mean, he is moving his abdomen more than his chest, while the, the female moving her chest in inspiration more than the abdomen. It's a more thoracoabdominal. The third, the, 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 the respiration, a number of respiration per minute. A number usually between 10 to 20 to 20. If it is more than 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, even 25, we call this an increased respiratory rate. Okay? 25 and more, we call it tachypnea. And we have two types of tachypnea. Shallow tachypnea, just like this. Shallow tachypnea. This is caused by acute injury to the lung. Pneumonia, pneumothorax, the fracture rib, pleurisy, etc. Then, while there is a tachypnea, another tachypnea, what we call it deep tachypnea, air hunger tachypnea, like this. And is more, respiratory rate is more than 25 per minute. This is, this is acidosis, salicylate poisoning, Diabetic ketoacidosis, all these cause deep tachypnea. Therefore, this patient is having what? A decrease in respiratory rate, abdominal mainly. He is under effort, therefore, he is short of a breath. It's not easy respiration. He is short of a breath, this patient. This is an inspection. First, we say the shape. Secondly, we said the, 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 the respiration, all the respiration. The three part of the inspection of the respiratory system is the cardiac. We look for apex beat. That is the cardiac compass. He is nodding. 
the cardiac impulse by inspection we couldn't see look we look for epigastric pulsation yes there is epigastric pulsation usually the epigastric pulsation is systolic in nature and is seen with, with pulmonary hypertension and tricuspid incompetence see, seen with the pulsation of the liver or whatever the cause and we look for suprasternal pulsation. In this area of suprasternal pulsation between two sternomastoid, any pulsation in this area, suprasternal pulsation, you should look for what? Look for aortic aneurysm and unfolded aorta in severe hypertension. Also, we look for pulsation of the uh, JVB, which, which is hidden by the catheter. Uh, dialysis catheter and the JVB is elevated till 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 the ear here the JVB elevated and JVB elevation most of the causes of JVB elevation are right side you say it is a cardiac elevation causes elevated JVB or non cardiac the non cardiac anemia Thyrotoxicosis, hyperdynamic circulation, then obstruction of the severe vena cava, obstruction by lymph node, by malignancy, by thrombosis, by trauma, all these causes elevated JVB. While the cardiac is only right side causing elevated JVB, pulmonary hypertension, pulmonary stenosis, tricuspid incompetence, constrictive, restrictive, all these on the right side causing elevated JVB. Congestive cardiac failure, all this mainly on the right burden, even constrictive pericarditis that elevated the JVB is that on the right side. While we haven't got left side lesion in the heart causing elevated JVB and until the, the patient get pulmonary hypertension. Therefore, in mitral stenosis, you couldn't see JVB elevated unless it is advanced causing pulmonary hypertension even that aortic aortic valve disease okay the jvb is the right side elevated bill heart in the heart right side that the diseases causing elevated jvb okay therefore inspection of the respiratory system first of all shape secondly respiration all the respiration counting abdominal thoracic then whether he is technical or not the three the cardiology in cardiology, we're looking for the epic speed, we look for epigastric pulsation, we look for suprasternal pulsation, when we look for the JVP. The fourth of the inspection is, is the chest movement. Movement of the chest on taking a deep breath. Yes, the chest is equally moved, just like this, equally moved, but limited equally move but limited if you see the chest is is moving just like this moving on the left side and the right side is not moving the disease on the on the side not moving right or left okay therefore this patient have a, a generalized disease in causing insult on on the lung where he is a, a he is a, a patient of chronic renal failure on dialysis and he got chest problem this is the, the movement of the chest on taking a deep breath. Look for inflation of the chest, okay? After that, you look for on one side, you see, if, you, if we suppose this side is not moving or moving less than the left, you should look for it whether it is less moving or move, less moving in the upper part or lower part. 90% of the respiratory disease in the lower part and even 10% all in the upper part only, okay? Pleural effusion, hemothorax, malignancy, mainly, mainly in, in, in that area, okay? Uh, the, the fifth, fifth uh, part of the inspection of the respiratory system is extrathoracic. We mean by extrathoracic, mean clubbing, maybe like, we look for a clubbing. This is a, a, a half and a half nail. You look for that half and a half nail. You see the pigmentation distally. Then 
that in seen in chronic renal failure and sometimes normal. We look for clubbing, we look for, we look for cyanosis. He is not cyanosed because he is anemic, is it? And uh, anemia and cyanosis, you will never see patient with anemia with cyanosis because you need five gram and more reduced hemoglobin to get cyanosis, okay? Another part of extra, we look for ankle edema. He, he had foot edema, bilateral foot edema. Bilateral, this is edema. When we press it, we see it edematous. Then, yes. And you should press, press the, the ankle joint or the foot and at, at least one minute, then. And you see if it is, it is uh, you, you get a uh, uh, pressure, your finger being dipped on, on, on the skin, you, you, you keep it, you, you will look it for an, a, half, a half a minute to see whether it disappears or not. Therefore, this, is, this patient got a bilateral ankle edema by this test. And skin is pale, bilateral ankle edema. Immediately we look for what below the knee. Below the knee for edema. And this patient got it below knee. Above the knee, if you look for edema, you should just squeeze in the skin. You get indentation of your finger in the skin. Okay? Above it, you look for ascites, whether the patient got ascites, and this patient got an ascites, a fluid in the abdomen. And later on, you should look for what? You look for presacral edema. If presacral edema is positive, it means that patient is a bedridden. Severe, severe, severe edema in the leg with ascites, will, and, and the presacral edema is negative, it means that the patient is mobile, okay? He's not bedridden, okay? And this is the, the how to inspect the respiratory system. For the palpation, also five. We said five for inspection of respiratory system. The shape, the respiration, the cardiology, the movement, and extrathoracic science. And for palpation, First of all, we palpate the trachea. This is the way to palpate the trachea. Put your index finger in the in the uh, suprasternal notch and push it, push it, push it forward. If you get a, a resistance in the front of you, this is the trachea resistance. Therefore, the trachea is central. If we put it just like this, and we found we didn't find a resistance, it's being pushed, pushed. On the left side, it means the trachea deviated to the what to the right, either being pulled by right lesion in the chest or being pushed by the left lesion in the chest. Okay, and after that we can put it our finger just like this for the, to detect the trachea. And when you push your finger in the sternal notch, you should move it just like this to see the ring of the cartilage. If you palpate the ring of the cartilage, it means the thyroid is up, not down, not retrosternal thyroid. If you couldn't find the ring of the uh, trachea cartilage, it means thyroid gland is down. It means retrosternal thyroid uh, goiter. Therefore, percussion of the sternum is a must, okay? After that, number two is the palp palpation for the epic speed. Epic speed in this patient. On inspection, we couldn't localize the epic speed. On palpation, we just let, put our index finger on the nipple, and just like this. Therefore, epic speed is there. Thrusting. It means there are three epic speed only. A normal, in the normal place, between the rib, it doesn't shift or lift the finger, my finger. It doesn't lift it, okay, up. 
and pinpoint يعني one finger you can you can detect it there is no more than one finger okay while the thrust in epic speed is the epic speed in between the ribs but it push my finger okay it means there is a, 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 a force force coming from that heart to push my finger this is the, call it the thrusting some people call it heaving some people call it uh, hyperdynamic. strong uh, hyperdynamic etc and because it is the epic speed is it the within the clavicular the mid clavicular line not displaced this this is the epic speed therefore it is a pressure overload this epic speed is a pressure overload call it thrusting pressure overload it means that the causes of this epic speed either aortic stenosis or severe hypertension and this patient got severe hypertension okay while if the epic speed is a thrusting and it is in the anterior axillary line it means push my finger up up and it is displaced this is the epic speed call it volume overload volume overload either aortic incompetence or mitral incompetence i mean volume large volume it being pushed but displaced this epic speed is not displaced the third type of epic speed the tapping epic speed tapping epic speed when we put our finger it, it is it is in between the ribs but not localized, it is, it is there and there and there, diffuse, because the tapping epic speed is made by the, the right ventricle. The surface of right ventricle, a right ventricle have no tip, while the left ventricle have tip. Therefore, if you localize the epic speed by one finger, it means you, you are localizing the left ventricle tip, okay? While tapping epic speed, it means the surface of the right liver, uh, sorry, right ventricle is pushing the chest wall. Therefore, tapping epic speed seen in pulmonary hypertension, in uh, mitral stenosis, in ASD. This is because the pressure on the right side, on the lung, on the pulmonary system, on the right ventricle causes it the hypertrophy and pushing the left ventricle away from the sternum and he too took over. Therefore, we have only three epic speed. A normal can be localized by single finger and not pushing my finger and in the normal place and within the midclavicular mid line. While the thrusting epic speed or even epic speed is, yes, it's, it is pushing my finger up, push it up there. Either displaced or not displaced. If not displaced, this is a pressure overload. If it's displaced, it is, it is valvular uh, overload. Aortic competence, mitral competence, displace it to the other side. Okay? And the third epic speed is tapping. Your speed is mainly right side. Right, tapping made by the right ventricle. While the other epic speed, normal and heaving, made by what? by the left ventricle. Therefore, first of all, palpation of the trachea. Second, palpation of the epic speed. Third, then, palpation of the parasternal heave. Any patient with tapping epic speed, you should look for parasternal heave because he has got pulmonary hypertension. Not this patient. This patient got heaving epic speed. The other palpation, chest, you palpate in a thrill, if, if the patient got murmur or, or, or etc. And then there was she palpation of the trachea. Secondly, palpation of the epic speed. Fourthly, palpation of what? Parasternal heave. Then, and, and fifthly, palpation of uh, for surgical emphysema, just like this, especially in, edema, in, in asthmatic patient, chronic obstructive airway disease, and any trauma causing uh, subcutaneous uh, air, air in, in the skin. Okay, palpation of, of, of the chest. This is palpation of the chest. Five, uh, we come now to the percussion. Any case, short case, respiratory. 
If you are ne not reaching the diagnosis by inspection and palpation, you are nowhere because you are going to fail. Inspection and palpation to confirm the diagnosis, to, to, to diagnose, and percussion and auscultation to confirm your diagnosis. Okay? And then we finish inspection and we finish the palpation, and now we come for percussion. Percussion of the respiratory system, percussion of the clavicle. This is the clavicle. The middle, middle third of the clavicle, we percuss it like this. And like this. Then we percuss the chest right and left. Tympanic, 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 tympanic. Down, down. Okay? We draw a map and, and thus. And there is a specific per, uh, percussion. There is a specific percussion in the chest. Percussion of the upper dome of the liver. Percussion of the heart. Percussion of the apex of the lung. And percussion of the diaphragm. Percussion of, of, the, of the liver. This is percussion of, of the upper dome of the liver. Anterior axial line, not midclavicular. Liver, percussion, and tear axial line. Yes, dull, dull. And mid axial line and posterior scapula. Percussion of, of the apex of the lung, we put our finger in this way above the clavicle and we percuss. Percussion of the heart, there are only two indications for percussion of the heart pericardial effusion or obstructive airway disease. In obstructive airway disease, we find no percussion note. Tympanic, because the chest is hyperinflated above, above the, of the heart while heart being pushed down. Percussion of the heart in this way. We put a mark there because it's become dull. We put a mark there. There, 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 we put a mark. And then we're from the axilla, down, upward, and we put a mark. And after you finish, you take your hand and put it on that area. It must be, your heart is your fist, not more. Plus one centimeter or, or not more. That's the heart. If it is large, it means pericardiational fusion, okay? This is the percussion of the, the heart. Percussion of the diaphragm. Diaphragm is four millimeter. How can we percuss it? Never, you, can, you can't percuss the diaphragm. Actually, we are percussing the upper border of the liver on the right side, in the back, which the diaphragm is attaching to, okay? Therefore, this is the percussion of the diaphragm. This is away from the scapula. Dull. This is this is in the eight. It it becomes dull. Put nafas amiq. Take a deep breath and hold it. La baki. Put nafas amiq and baki. It becomes tympanic. It means the diaphragm is moving in this area between the fifth in, in, intercostal space and up to the seven. This is the percussion of the diaphragm. After we finish in the percussion, auscultation. There are only three things in auscultation you should look for. First of all, auscultation, what is the type of a breathe? Is it normal? Just like this? Or it is harsh? Or is it wheeze? Oh, therefore, we look for the type of the, whether it is vesicular or bronchial. Whether it is vesicular, normal vesicular, or a prolonged expiratory phase in obstructive airway disease. It is vesicular. But the expiration is three times, four times more than inspiration. Usually, the expiration is a half and less for of the inspiration time. Bronchial breathing characterized by the, the following thing. 
It is harsh. Equal faces mean inspiration equal to the expiration. And there is a gap in between the inspiration, expiration, and there is at the sound. Crepitation, fine crepitation. This is the classical triad of bronchial breathing. Crepitation is not a must for the diagnosis because the bronchial breathing normally above the tra above the trachea is without a crepitation, More but it's the bronchial yeah. breathing still. Okay. Saltation of the respiratory system is by the tail, usually. All the respiratory sound are low pitch, except the uh, fine crepitation is high pitch. But you can examine the oscillate the respiratory system with, with the diaphragm. It's okay. Put the nephes up the nephes head. Yes, put the nephes. Yes, it is the normally <coughs> vesicular breathing. I mean the inspiration, auscultation of the chest, auscultation of the chest, chest by the pill. Because the respiratory sound all are low pitch and the pill for the low pitch. Except uh, fine crepitation is high pitch, you can auscultate it with the diaphragm. But in the exam, you are allowed to, to examine the chest auscultation by the diaphragm or by the pill, up to you. Nobody say no or, or yes, it, both you can use it. The respiratory sound, there are three things we look in the auscultation. First of all, we look for the respiratory sound, whether it is vesicular or bronchial, or vesicular with a prolonged expiratory phase in chronic, in asthma and chronic obstructive airway disease. Vesicular, it means hafif. It's not harsh like this. This is a bronchial. It is just like this. The inspiration is, is two times the time of expiration, just like this. There is no gap in between inspiration, three seconds, and one and a half second, or one second, or two seconds, the expiration. This is the vesicular breathing. Anywhere in the chest is vesicular breathing except over the trachea. It is a bronchial breathing. Normally, bronchial breathing is above the trachea. This is first. Second, harsh, if the, if the, if the sound is a harsh, mean, And there is equal phases in inspiration, just in time like expiration. Not like the, like the, the, the vesicular. This is equal phases. And there is a gap. Look for the gap. There is a gap in between. There is a silent, silent sound in this, this in between this expiration and inspiration, okay? And there is a crepitation, fine crepitation, and inspiratory, fine crepitation. These are the criteria of a bronchial breathing. Usually bronchial breathing normally above the trachea, but without a crepitation. In the chest, there is a consolidation, a cavity. All these can cause a bronchial breathing. While the, the, the other type of breathing is a, a normal vesicular with prolonged expiratory phase, just like this. But this prolonged expiratory phase make a sound of wheeze or ronca. Indicating that this patient got either asthma or chronic obstructive airway disease. These are the type of respiration. Therefore, we look for breath sound. Secondly, for the vocal resonance, will in the, in, in the scope on the chest, on the chest you tell the patient to say one, 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 or 44, anything coming from the throat. 
Auscultation of the respiratory system with three things. First of all, type of breathing. We divided it into normal. It is vesicular. Vesicular with the prolonged expiratory phase and, and, and bronchial breathing. The second thing is, is the vocal resonance. Not vocal affirmatives. Vocal affirmatives by the hand. Vocal resonance by stethoscope. And you tell the patient to say something coming from his throat. Not using these 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 word P. This is from your lips, not from the throat. Use one, two, three. I couldn't I, I didn't close my lips to pronounce P. This is not used for for uh, for uh, physical breathing or uh, vocal vocal uh, resonance uh, or vocal affirmatives. Using the sound coming from the throat, from the vocal cord, and the other things. The third one is the added sound: wheeze, crepitation, rub, pleural rub, etc. We forget in the uh, on the palpation. You should do vocal affirmatives by the hand. This is the way. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. On the back also. Around the, the, the vertebra. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. This is vocal affirmatives. It's vital. I am surprising why I've been, been omitted. Because I will never take, I will never do plural aspirate or a plural biopsy or a plural or fine needle unless I do vocal affirmatives. It is a useful sign and vocal, vocal resonance by auscultation. This is an important thing. You should keep vocal affirmatives in action, not be omitted. They omitted, I don't know why they omitted this. Uh, it's a very important sign on judging whether you aspirate or not. Because if the vocal affirmatives is normally, I, I, I feel the lung. If I put my needle, I will do a pneumothorax in the patient. It means there is no fluid in, in front of me. Thank you very much.